Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! Hey, be careful, Tony. I think that dog is up to something. First of all, don't panic and don't scream. The dog can feel your fear and it will attack you even faster then. Don't move and don't try to run away because the dog is faster than you. Moreover, seeing you run can bring out its natural instinct of chasing its prey. Just stand still. Don't move your arms and don't look it in the eyes. You have to be calm and make sure the dog doesn't see you as a threat. Otherwise, it will try to neutralize the threat as fast as possible. Hmm, it's not attacking you, but it's not going away. So, what you need to do is try to distract the dog with an object. For example, you could carefully throw your bottle of water at the dog. It might start chewing it and you will have time to escape unnoticed. It's not working. It looks like you are more interesting than the bottle. Well, let's try to wear the dog down. Press your hands against your body and don't move. But remember, you have to face the dog at all times. It will reduce the chance of an attack because only specially trained dogs will attack you from the front. A street dog will try to get around you and attack you from the back. So, stay in one place, keep spinning and face the dog. And let's hope that the dog will grow tired of this game and go. Phew! All's well that ends well, right Tony? So just in case, I'm gonna tell you what to do if a dog attacks you. First, try to shield yourself using anything you have at hand. It could be a backpack, a stick, or something like that. Try to protect your face, your neck, and your chest. A dog bite in these parts of the body can be lethal. If the dog does bite you, you have to clean the wound and patch it up as soon as possible, and then go straight to the doctor, of course. Dogs carry dangerous and deadly diseases, like tetanus and rabies. But don't worry, the doctor will know what to do and will give you the treatment you need. Fortunately, medicine is pretty advanced in our days. Before we go, allow me to say that dogs aren't evil or dangerous creatures. On the contrary, they are very sweet and kind. So if you don't hurt animals, they won't try to hurt you back. Love all creatures, great and small. They need our care more than we need theirs. Hey, Tony, get up! It's the zombie apocalypse! We're all gonna die! Ah! <laughs> just kidding, Tony, just kidding. I'm just messing with you. But I do think we have to be ready to face anything, especially a zombie apocalypse. So let's prepare ourselves. First, let's make some booby traps that will let us know if there are zombies around. We're gonna need a long rope some cans, and a bunch of little metal objects like nails, screws, beads, and so on. Now we're gonna attach the cans to the rope at the same distance from each other and place some metal objects inside each can. Perfect! Let's install this trap around the house. If the zombies come close, the cans will make noise, but it's just an alarm system. Apart from that, we should barricade all the doors and windows so the walking dead won't get into our house. But if they somehow enter, we need to defend ourselves. Let's make some armor to protect your body. We're gonna need magazines and duct tape. Wrap a magazine around your arm and tape it. Do the same on the other arm and in both legs. Zombies shouldn't be able to bite through this outfit. And remember, the first rule to survive a zombie apocalypse is avoid being bitten. We're also gonna need some weapons to defeat these bastards. The best option would be a shotgun because it shoots in all directions at once, so there's almost no chance you will miss. Well, okay Tony, I think we'll be better off without firearms. Otherwise, you could hurt yourself. Let's try a machete. It is the best option for you. No sound and high performance. Oh, we also need to buy some survival essentials, such as food that won't go bad lots of drinking water, a first aid kit, a flashlight, some batteries, and a pocket radio. This is the only way to know if there are other survivors and find them. Hey, Tony, we're going on vacation to the best resort ever. Wait, hold on, what's going on? Arr, Tony, I think we're falling, ah! Tony, 
How are you? Phew! Good thing we're fine. Looks like we're on a desert island. Tony, get yourself together. We can't panic right now. We have to figure out how to survive. First, we need some drinking water. Take all the containers you have and put them out to collect rainwater. You can use big leaves so the water would run into them faster. After that, we have to explore the island to see if we can find a source of fresh water. And for now, let's make a water collector that uses solar energy. First, we have to dig a hole and place a container in the middle. We then fill the area around the container with something moist, for example, watered leaves. Once ready, close the hole with film or plastic using rocks to hold the material in place, and then put a stone on top of the plastic. Ready! Now the water from the leaves will evaporate and condensate on the inner side of the plastic and the water will end up in the container. Now let's build a shelter. The first option is finding a long stick and placing it against a tree. Then we find some shorter sticks and place them against the first one. Now we cover everything with big leaves. But to be honest, I think we're going to be here for a long time, so it will be better to create a proper shelter. Let's build a teepee. First, we are going to need around 10 or 20 long sticks. The thicker they are, the better. We're going to make the frame using three twigs. We're going to place the rest of the sticks around, but don't forget to leave some place for the entrance. The frame is ready. Now we cover the construction with some big leaves and our cozy home is ready. Well, that's all for today, Tony. Let's get some sleep and we're going to keep working in the morning. Come on, Tony, get up. It's time to find some food. The best option for us is finding some fish. Easy, easy. First, we have to catch it. We're going to need a stick and a piece of metal. You have to sharpen one end to create a spear. Now let's find some shallow waters. So you need to stand on a rock or if there aren't any, then stay quiet. You have to move slowly so you won't scare away the fish. Look, there's one. Now we wait, wait, wait. It has stopped. It's time. Stab it with the spear, aiming for the head. Don't worry, Tony. It's really hard to do it right the first time. If you train, you will become the best hunter on this island. Now let's try to make a fire. So we take a small piece of wood and we carve out a small groove in the base. Put some firewood there and using a hard stick, start to rub. I think it's working, Tony. I see some smoke. Now quickly place some dry twigs and start blowing to keep the fire. And that's it. Just keep placing bigger twigs on top. Here we have some other tips to survive on a desert island. Always keep your spear with you because you never know what kind of predators you will find. And don't swim too far in the ocean. There can be sharks that will happily have you for lunch. So stay in shallow waters where big sharks can't get you. <laughs> and now that we have a fire, we can make a big SOS sign using wood. We will set it on fire at night and hopefully someone will see our call for help. Another option is making a raft and trying to sail away, but surviving in the open ocean under the boiling sun with limited food and water is way harder than surviving on an island. Tony, look, look, a ship. Set the signal on fire. It's coming for us. Yay, we're safe, Tony. Hello, everyone. Tony, fresh air is always good, but out in the open, you can find dangerous and sometimes poisonous snakes. See, told ya. First of all, Tony, don't panic. You should remain calm, so your heart won't beat harder and your blood won't spread the venom faster. If you can, try taking a picture of the snake so that the doctors can give you the right antidote. And of course, call an ambulance. The faster you get help, the bigger your chances of survival. While we wait for the paramedics, sit and keep the area of the bite below the heart. Tend the wound with antiseptic and put a dry bandage on it, but not too tight, because the bite can swell and the bandage can hurt the skin. Apart from that, you should write the time of the accident and your symptoms. So, even if you pass out before getting help, the doctors will have all the information to save your life. Overall, these are the basic rules to survive a snake bite. 
But you know, Tony, the best way to protect yourself is being cautious. To avoid getting bit by a snake, you should be careful where you walk and avoid places where you can easily find snakes. Check tall grass with a stick before entering. This might scare the snake away or force it to bite the stick first. Once it had attacked, the snake will go away because you are bigger than it and it is probably scared of you as well. Remember that snakes attack humans not because they are predators, but only to protect themselves. Wait, Tony, don't do that. You're like a baby trying to put everything in your mouth. I know that people in films usually suck the poison from the wound, but research has shown that this method isn't effective. It only allows you to remove 2% of the poison. Moreover, the poison can get to your blood even faster through the buccal cavity. You also shouldn't cut the wound to supposedly let the blood with the poison get out. And last but not least, you shouldn't apply a tourniquet to stop the poison from spreading. It isn't effective and can significantly increase the chance of gangrene. This usually ends with the victim losing its limb. The ambulance is here. Don't worry, dear friends. Tony will be okay. Tony, pack your bags. We're going to visit some islands. We're gonna relax and swim. Great. Now we're ready to show our audience how to behave in case of a shark attack. To begin with, I would like to point out that sharks are not the bloodthirsty killers that we see in movies. Statistically, there are less than 100 shark attacks every year around the world. In fact, more people are attacked by dogs every year. Overall, it is not typical for sharks to chase people around, only when they are very hungry. They don't care who they hunt and their survival instinct makes them attack humans. And they starve because of what? That's right, Tony, because of people. More specifically, industrial fishermen who catch tons of fish that sharks could have enjoyed. Well, let's see how to behave if you see a shark. First of all, don't start floundering and splashing around, as this will attract the attention of the predator. Second, don't try to swim away from it. This is impossible and can provoke the shark to attack. You need to stay where you are, keep calm and keep your eyes on the predator. Most likely, the shark will leave because, as we said earlier, human beings are not part of their diet. But if the shark attacks you, try to hit it. For example, you can punch it in the eyes and tip of the nose. These are the most sensitive areas on the shark's body. In most cases, these underwater predators will leave immediately after they feel resistance. They like more defenseless victims. And of course, it's important having someone else around to get you out of the water. The thing is that sharks first circle around their victims, studying them, and then suddenly attack and bite them. After that, they wait next to the prey until the latter is exhausted from losing blood. That's when you need someone to save you. How are you, Tony? Mm. Come on, don't be upset. Look what an enlightening video we've made. Wow, Tony, what have you got there? Hmm, it looks like you were bitten by a spider. You have all the signs. First, there are two little wounds next to each other, although you could also have a big inflamed wound. And the second sign is swelling, redness, and skin damage. Other symptoms include blisters on the skin, and after some days, you will notice pus formation. What are you so happy about, yeah. Tony? You're not gonna get any superpowers that will allow you to climb walls, shoot webs, or fight crime. Almost all spiders are venomous, but the power and toxicity of each spider depends on the species. Some spiders can only kill insects, while other can kill rats and spiders, and some might even kill an elephant. Usually, it depends on the spider's diet. When they attack, they bite their victims and inject poison in their bodies, dissolving their intestines. After that, the spiders simply drink them like a protein shake. That's one of the reasons why spider bites never go unnoticed, and you are guaranteed to experience some pain. But let's get back to Tony. In general, spiders don't attack people because they don't eat people. They bite us when we provoke them, whether intentionally or accidentally. If you bother a spider in its home, it will bite you as a means of self-defense, and then it will run away. Oh, I got distracted again. Apparently, I know too much. Looks like Tony is okay, for now. But if you are bitten by a spider, you can develop different symptoms. They include weakness, headache, dizziness, nausea, 
swelling, muscle pain, excessive sweating, impaired coordination, paleness, and much more. Hmm, but that's the way Tony is every day. Still, we should administer him first aid. For starters, we should clean the wound to remove the remaining venom. After that, disinfect the wound. You can use alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, or something like that. If the pain gets stronger and the wound swells, you should apply a cold compress. What you shouldn't do is try to squeeze the venom out. This procedure will only make the venom move faster through the blood. If you think your friend has been bitten by a dangerous spider, you should call an ambulance ASAP. While you wait, antihistamines are a great way to alleviate the allergic reaction. In most cases, death is caused by allergic reactions to the venom, so be careful. Apart from that, the victim should drink lots of fluids so the kidneys will work harder, getting rid of the venom in a natural way. Tony is looking worse. Luckily, the doctors are here, so everything will be okay. Bye, Tony. Get well. So, friends, tell us in the comments if there are any dangerous spiders in the place where you live. Maybe you even have seen one. The best stories will be featured in the next episode. For now, we say goodbye. See you in a new episode of Super Tony. Bye-bye.